please read the I will recommend you to stop the video and read it before I read it to you guys so I give you time so let's read it we're going to do an integral balance on a semi-batch process okay so they already giving you what to do integral balance they actually shouldn't give you this they should they should just tell you semi-batch process or not even that they could tell you okay we have this process but okay they are so nice they tell you do an integral balance and giving you the answer guys for everything but don't worry air is being bubbled through a drum of liquid hexane okay hexane is liquid we're using air and it's being bubbled okay and they give you this rate what does this rate mean it's how much we are feeding air air feed the gas stream leaving the drum contains 10% of hexane. What does that mean? It means that it comes air here and because we have here hexane and the air and hexane are mixing. But you know air cannot stay in the hexane so the air goes out and surprisingly it has 10% mole of hexane and the other one or the balance is air. So what it happened is like let's say dry air goes inside and goes out but not only dry it has a little bit of exhane so it's insoluble that's what I was talking to you like guys air doesn't stay inside the exhane it just goes out they tell you another time using integral balance and giving you everything to estimate the time we need to give an answer in time required to vaporize 10 cubic meters of liquid. So let's do it. First of all, I want to show you that this process here is continuous, and this process here of like the 10 cubic meter is between continuous and batch because actually it's a batch. We are doing a batch of 10 cubic meters of exchange. So that's why it's not a continuous process, it's a semi-batch process. <laughs> but anyways, let's do our mass balance, because we're used to ma do mass balance. Let's do it global. What does that mean in general in all the equipment and currents? It's equal to inlet minus outlet plus production minus consumption. We'll give you accumulation. It's cool that we have no reaction, so we have no P, no C, so we only get inlets and outlets equal accumulation number one now they don't give it to you but you know internet exists so you get the density you should get 660 kilograms of hexane per cubic meter so that's cool we will use it later now let's do a mass balance of hexane hexane inlet no there's no inlet actually so we're going to drop it there's outlet yes it's going with air so we cannot cross it no production because no reaction and no consumption. So we have now these minus outlets equal accumulation. We have two equations. And finally, just to get out of doubt, let's do a mass balance in air. Inlet, yes, we have an inlet. Outlet, yes, we have an outlet. Production, no, no, no reaction and no consumption. Accumulation, of course. No, actually, the, no, the system is not accumulating air. It's only drying hexane. Air is just going in and goes out. Sorry about that, guys. Air is not accumulated in the system. Air goes in the system and then goes out the system. So we have this equation number three. Cool. Now, let's calculate the time for the volume required. It's 10 cubic meters, so we're going to substitute 1, 2, and 3. All the data. So from 1, we have F, this one, we're going to turn it to F, and O, we're going to turn it to P, which is, I like to call feed and product. So feed is going in the inside and product is going out, and it accumulates. So we have a number for equation, we can forget equation 1, and then equation 2, just O, the outlet, will be P of H. What does this mean? This mean? How much product of high, uh, of hexane on the hexane, and I will accumulate hexane. 
So notice guys that the normal accumulation of the system is not the accumulation of the exane. And of course it is not the accumulation of air, which is zero. As I told you before, there's no accumulation. So accumulation of air is zero. Oh, sorry guys. Accumulation of exane, I don't know, that's actually what we want to calculate. And accumulation of the system, we don't know it either. So guys, now let's substitute equation 3, which will give you inlet of air equals outlet of air. We will call it number 6. Uh, we actually know the inlet of air, which is 0.1 kilomole of air per minute. Here is it, the air feed equals to the outlet of air. You don't know the outlet of air, but you can calculate it. You know that 90% of P is air. Why? Because 0.1 is exchange, so the rest, uh, the other amount must be air. So 0.9 is air. I do math. We have one number here, one number here, and we have one variable. We can do some math, and you get that P is 0.111 kilomole per minute. Nice. So we continue. From the density data, I told you, you can find in internet. Don't be so childish and tell, hey, I have no density, so I cannot uh, answer this problem. No. You are young, but yet you need to know that densities, all viscosities, all those kind of data you can uh, find in internet so easy, you're going to use it. So let's do it. Having density, you can calculate ma uh, mass with volume. You know that, guys, from chemistry classes, physics classes, common sense, etc. So the mass of exane equals density of exane times volume of exane. So I just substitute the 660 kilograms of exane per cubic meter times 10 cubic meter of exane. You will have to get rid of 6,600 kilograms of exane. We have the mass needed to get rid. And why are we doing this mass? And why not volume? Because we're talking about mass balance. Later on, guys, you will see that liquid is not constant. It depends. The volume of the liquid depends on the temperature, pressure, if you mix it. You have solutions that go and shrink, you have solutions that expand, etc. So never trust liquids, guys. Always trust only mass. Now, we want the moles because we, as before I told you guys, here we're talking about moles, we're talking about moles. Everything is in moles. So let's change everything to moles. You know that mass times the molecular weight will give you the actual moles or kilomoles. So mass, I told you, it's only 660 kilograms of exane divided by 86 kilograms of, of kilomole of exane. So this one goes off, off, and you get this amount of kilomole exane. Good. Now from the mass balance, there will be an accumulation. Accumulation is always mass in time, as I told you, accumulation is always this little guy here. And you know mass, as I told you before, you can multiply moles times molecular weight, which is here. And you can take out this molecular weight out, because it's a constant. So we have this. Let's solve it. From 7 and number 5, we know accumulation of... Here it is. Accumulation of exane is equal to minus P exane. So accumulation will be equal to this. You have two equations, now solve. You substitute this one and this one. So you get this here. And this is equal to this. Sorry for all these lines, but it's to get you know how I get this. This is very important because you now have a differential equation, which is easy to solve. You just first, we drop this one here. Molecular weight, we can leave it here, and the moles, we can leave there. So, actually, we just need to substitute the amount of P. This will be the differential. Hopefully, you know, that's math. And 
you know that this here guys is the most needed to take out why hopefully you know why because i'm not going to explain you guys it's so easy you need to know it so continuing we have yes we have this we have this and the differential will give you time final minus time initial which is i don't know normally the initial time is zero so you get the, the final time or the time just divide this guy and you get the answer in minutes which it doesn't make that much like impression if you say 6000 minutes now I will like actually know how much is so you can change it to hours 115 hours or actually you can change it to days which will be 23 times I don't know it's about 4 and 5 hours 5 days to take that so it's a long of time a lot of time 